Welcome to 7 Things You Need to Know for Monday, March 4th, 2024. We begin with special focus on the state of the Gaza-Israel war 150 days in. This, with over 30,000 casualties, Israel's failed strategy by most measures and increasing tensions between the Biden administration and Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu. Also, the Supreme Court keeps Trump on the ballot headed into Super Tuesday. Let's get into it. Number one, with 150 days into the Israel-Hamas war, all this for what? According to Andreas Krieg, a senior lecturer at the School of Security Studies at King's College London, he believes that Israel has been, quote, very unsuccessful in its military strategy. He said that while Israel has killed 20 to 30 percent of Hamas fighting force, quote, it hasn't been any way for the Israeli army to really kill or arrest large parts, the majority of the fighting force that belongs to Hamas and the different Hamas entities. This because they attack through the rear and through ambushes and then disappears again. Other analysts are blunter. Tahini Mustafa, a senior analyst at the International Crisis Group, says that Israel has not been able to accomplish a single military objective it set out to achieve. Number two, horrific death toll. At this point, Israel has killed over 30,000 Palestinians including 12,500 children and teens. This according to the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry. Added to this dreadful figure is another 70,000 wounded. A staggering 85% of the total population of Gaza, that is 1.9 million civilians, have been forcefully displaced due to Israel's military operations. This according to the United Nations Emergency Relief Coordinator. International aid organizations say that half a million people in Gaza are facing starvation and hunger, particularly in northern Gaza. Number three, Hamas remains strong. As Mustafa told TRT, this is ultimately a war of attrition. And Hamas is still able to last it out. She added that, quote, Hamas is pursuing a tactic of not only asymmetrical warfare, but also asymmetrical diplomacy, trying to basically weather it out until Israel becomes desperate enough that it needs to talk to it. Political analyst and associate fellow at Chatham House's Middle East and North Africa program, Yossi Mackelberg, says that the goal that Israel set out for itself to destroy Hamas is very difficult. Mackelberg adds that bombs cannot kill an idea and added that Hamas is a political movement and Hamas represents ideas, ideologies, whether we like it or not. Number four, and what about the hostages? According to Cree, Quote, not even a handful of hostages were freed by the Israeli army, which again shows that a military-only approach to freeing hostages is never going to work. He added that the only real significant contribution to the release of hostages was through negotiations. He added ruefully that, so in that respect, Israel has also failed with its strategy. It has actually killed more hostages than it has freed by military force. Number five. Israel's bond with the United States is tested. President Biden delegated his vice president, Kamala Harris, to speak out against the ongoing Israeli incursion into Gaza. She called it, quote, a humanitarian catastrophe. And she called for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. She said that Hamas should agree to the six-week pause currently on the table and that Israel should increase the flow of aid into the besieged enclave amid a humanitarian crisis. Harris would not have made this forceful statement if the Biden administration were not totally fed up with Bibi Netanyahu's mismanagement of the war as they see it. Number six, Gaza's political minefield for Biden. On Tuesday in Michigan, one of the key battlegrounds in November's presidential election, more than 100,000 people in the Democratic primary cast their ballot for uncommitted as part of a protest organized by pro-Palestinian Arab American groups. President Biden has been walking a tightrope between not angering either his traditionally pro-Israeli or pro-Arab Democratic coalitions. Number seven, former President Trump remains on the ballot. Monday morning, the Supreme Court of the United States decided to reject Colorado's rejection of Trump from the ballot because of his conduct around the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. Quote, nothing in the Constitution requires that we endure such chaos arriving at any time or different times up to and perhaps beyond the inauguration, the court said in a 13-page unsigned opinion. And this comes a day before Super Tuesday, when 15 states will vote to award more than a third of the party's delegates. Former President Trump is poised to dominate the field. 
And that's all for today. And if you like this series, check out other episodes here and like, share, and subscribe. And I'd love to see your comments. And I will see you tomorrow and hopefully in a little bit better.